Hello, we're back. And here we're going to talk about now that we've coded an encounter, now we're going to look at how that code set interfaces with the claim so the facility or the provider's office can be paid. Let's take a quick look. And again, when we talk about the back end of the revenue cycle, we're talking about the claims production, the revenue collection, in other words, the billing and getting the money. So before we send out a claim, it should be reviewed for data accuracy and completeness. And some of the stuff we've touched on in HIM 160, these are the things that you see on the bills. With EHRs now, we have internal auditing systems that are used to run each claim through a series of edits for the patient's payer. This is sometimes referred to as scrubbing. And again, you can see these two tables that are in your text with electronics transmissions, right? Which is basically nearly all the billing and claims that are going out. We have the claims or the encounter information in other words, the information you get on a super bill, the eligibility for a health plan, going back to that first step of revenue cycle, whether they're in the health plan, have insurance, what the health care claim status is, the enrollment, disenrollment in a health plan. Kaiser, for instance, enrolls and disenrolls people at the beginning of every month. So you have a little bit of a dead period potentially for people. And then as you see on the other side, we have the HIPAA code sets kind of tying back to what we talked about a little bit in the last set of video lectures. And these are things like RICD 10 CM and PCS coding sets, the national drug codes, the codes for dental procedures and nomenclature, HICPICS, and of course, CPT. And now that we're in ICD-10, we have our claims, right? And we used to have the UB-04 for the facility claims, right? 8371, basically we're talking the same type of thing. Likewise with the CMS 1500 form as for the provider end of it. Right. And then we still have the paper claims. These are very limited uses. We see them more often in workman's comp, right? As opposed to a physician's office or a hospital setting. And so how do we determine the reimbursement? Well, we use the data from the claim and the contract terms from the insurance company to calculate what the facility or the provider's office is going to get paid. And then this will go to their accounts receivable. You remember this term if you've ever taken accounting. In other words, that's the money we're due that we haven't collected yet. And then we ensure that the third party payer is going to pay the correct amount and that the amount to be collected from the patient is billed in a timely fashion. Some payers, if you don't bill within a certain time frame, you can't bill at all. And then that's lost revenue. And again, we look at accrual accounting, which is what most people use, where you have an accounts receivable amount that's recorded when patients are provided for the patients. You go to the provider's office, they code the services, code your claim, and then that amount that the patient and the payer needs to do is going on accounts receivable. And then this has to match, right? So whatever was provided to the patient needs to match on the accrual method. Cash accounting is something we don't see so much. And basically all amounts are recorded when the cash or funds are exchanged. And again, there's a delay. So in other words, between the time that money's received and when you actually get paid, there's typically a lag. So as a result, you have less revenue, not as accurate. And again, the determinant of the reimbursement, of course, is basically based on the insurance plan's benefits. So we can do 
usually one of four things. Either the claim is free, the services are covered, medically necessary, full reimbursement is made. The claim is suspended and the payer wants more documentation from the provider or maybe they just reject part of the claim, some sort of line item denial, or then the claim is completely rejected or denied. And this is a useful map. This is the Medicare administrative contractors, which we know as the MAX, and these adjudicate claims and administer reimbursement on behalf of Medicare. And then as we all know from our private physician's office, we have an explanation of benefits, right? And Medicare summary notices for Medicare beneficiaries. And this is basically stating what services were delivered, what was covered, what reimbursement was made, and any limits or denials, things that exceeded a certain amount, what have you. And again, you see one here, right? Line item one, there was a surgery. They were charged $1,045. Contractually, they were allowed to pay a $1,288. There were no other adjustments. So what was allowable charge was $232.12. The coinsurance was $46.42. So the benefit payment of $185.70. This is a great diagram that shows you a breakdown of what we see on these. We have a charge, allowable charge, and contractual allowance. The actual charge submitted to the insurance company by the provider is the charge. The allowable charge is the amount the payer has agreed for the reimbursement of this service. Some people think these are the same things. These are definitely not the same. And so this is where contracts with providers and it, the payers come in. So this is the amount that the payer is going to pay for the reimbursement. And then the difference between the allowable charge and the charge is the contractual allowance. With the claims reconciliation, the insurance company is going to send the provider a remittance advice. So this is basically outlining any rejections, line item denials or payments to the facility. The facility and the providers use the remittance advice to reconcile the accounts. This is more an accounting issue than an HIM issue. And then with collections, we want to make sure that the guarantor has paid their cost sharing in full. So we could use an internal collection unit, contract with a collection agency, or what have you. And that's all I have for you. We'll see you online. Bye now.